Hi friends, welcome back to our chapter reading. Today we are continuing with the book Toys Come Home by Emily Jenkins. Pictures are by Paul O. Zelinsky. So last time we left off with chapter four, so we're gonna pick up in chapter five called In Which Lumpy is Brave with a Tuna Casserole. Hmm. During his first four months in the house, as winter rages and then melts, as spring greens and flowers, Lumpy watches a lot of television and lets Stingray teach him board games. He also spends time in the bathroom. The girl sets him on the toilet seat cover while she takes a bath. It is there that the buffalo witnesses toothbrushing, hair combing, scrubbing with a long armed scrubby brush, nail clipping, something called hair conditioner, braiding, and also squirting with a spray bottle. It's all pretty difficult to understand. Lumpy's buffalo body doesn't need any conditioning or combing or clipping. He just goes all natural. And all this bathroom activity seems to take an awful lot of the girl's time every day. Some of it's obviously cleaning, but some of it doesn't make any sense. Like, why would you clip your nails? Wouldn't you want to sharpen them instead? At night, when Stingray is asleep on the high bed, Lumpy sometimes trots down the hall to talk to Tuck Tuck about the activities of the bathroom. Right now, he's curious about nose blowing. Where does the snot come from? It comes out in a big honk like magic. I want some snot, Lumpy tells Tuck Tuck. I want to blow my nose and have buffalo snot. I want to be ironed, says Tuck Tuck, but it's not happening. That's so unfair, Lumpy grumps. Tuck Tuck sighs but doesn't answer. Now Lumpy wants to know about the purple spray bottle. What's the point of it, he asks. People like gadgets, says Tuck Tuck sagely. All it does is get the tile wet. Why does she want the tile wet? She doesn't want the tile wet. She likes to work the spray bottle. Why? Just to work it. Lumpy doesn't think it sounds anywhere near as fun as blowing your nose. The next day, Lumpy, Stingray, and Sheep are helping the girl play farm. She's doing farm chores, walking around, and giving each toy a bagel chip. The mom comes upstairs carrying a new animal against her chest. It's an orange animal, a little smaller than the one-eared sheep. It's stripy on the back and white on the underbelly fairly fluffy and hairy. It doesn't seem to be made of plush, actually. In fact, it's wiggling in front of the girl, in front of the mommy. Stingray and Lumpy have never seen anything like it. The girl drops Lumpy. Pumpkin face head, she cries. She's here for the week, says the mother, setting the animal down, while Jessica's on vacation. I just have to get the litter box and the cat toys out of the car. As soon as the mom sets her down, Pumpkin Face Head bolts under the bed and presses herself against the wall. Hey there, kitty, the girl calls, lying on her tummy and reaching her hand under to stroke the thin orange tail. Pumpkin ha Face Head mews pitifully, but does not move. Meow. Kitty, 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 the girl coos. Meow. I won't hurt you. Meow. The girl tries a little longer while Pumpkin Face Head isn't coming out. So eventually the girl gives up and goes downstairs. What's your problem? Stingray scolds as soon as they're alone. Meow. You don't go running around in front of the people. Just stay still and quiet when they're here. Meow. I think she's scared, Lumpy says. That's why she ran. Don't be scared, little kitty. We won't hurt you. Meow, meow, meow. Doesn't it say anything else? Whispers Stingray. It doesn't seem very intelligent, frankly. Do you say anything else? Lumpy asks Pumpkin Face Head. It's okay if you don't. We'll still like you. It's just that we're curious and we really enjoy having conversations, he adds. While he's talking, Pumpkin Face Head's eyes have been focusing on a bagel chip left over from the farm game. The chip is lying on the carpet, dirty and fuzzy. In a movement so quick it makes Lumpy grunt in shock, the kitty shoots out from under the bed and pounces on the bagel chip, then bats it across the floor bounces it off the toy box, claws it viciously, and eats it. Did you see that? Lumpy whispers. I'm sitting next to you, says Stingray. Of course I saw it. What does it mean? She's very fast. What do you mean, what does it mean? Pumpkin Face Head ate that bagel chip. So no one else wanted it. No, she really ate it, says Lumpy. She's an eating type of kitty. Oh... Stingray ponders Pumpkin Face Head, who is now running around the room at top speed, leaping halfway onto bits of furniture and falling down all for no reason. She's like a people kitty. She moves like people. She eats like people, but she doesn't talk like people. 
All she says is mew, mew, and nothing but mew. She's a cat, pipes up sheep. That's the reason. Of course she's a cat, says Stingray. We all know she's a cat. A real cat, says sheep. What does that mean? Stingray asks. She eats, explains sheep. She doesn't just chew. Real is when you eat, says Lumpy, pondering. Uh-huh, says sheep. They like tuna. Stingray thinks this idea about a real eating explains some weird things she's seen on television. But Lumpy isn't sure sheep is right. He feels real. As real as pumpkin face head, just different. It's late at night when the problem begins. Stingray is asleep on the high bed with the little girl. Sheep doesn't sleep there anymore, so she and Lumpy are watching the toy mice practice acrobatics on a fancy blue pillow with fringe. Suddenly, from under the bed, a mad orange streak zips toward the mice and attacks them with claws bared. Pumpkin Face Head nabs the smallest mouse, a gray one, and tosses it high, then flips herself around and pounces on it again when it lands. The other mice disappear beneath the bookcase, and Sheep rolls remarkably quickly to an out-of-the-way place underneath the rocking horse. That poor gray mouse is squeaking in terror. Pumpkin Face Head bats with her paw and the tiny rodent skids out of the bedroom along the hallway and halfway down the steps. The kitten tumbles after it, tail over ears, then charges back, undaunted, to attack again. This time, she takes the mouse in her teeth and returns to the upstairs hall where she hits it across the wooden floor. Lumpy is scared. He feels sick to his stomach, but he has to help that mouse. He searches the bedroom for something to throw at the kitten. Aha! A sparkly red Mary Jane shoe from the closet. He grips it in his front paws and waddles to the hall on his hind feet. Pumpkin Face Head is crouching, ready to spring, tail twitching and eyes darting as the poor mouse limps across the hallway in search of somewhere to hide. Stop, kitty! cries Lumpy, so worried for the mouse he doesn't care if the people hear him. Oof! Lumpy hurls the shoe with all his might. Clack, clack, clackily. It doesn't go far. It's very heavy. But at least it makes a noise, and Pumpkin Face Head springs to one side, electrified. There's a picture of Lumpy throwing the shoe at the cat. <clears throat> then she leaps over the mouse, over the shoe, and tackles Lumpy. The buffalo is bigger, but the kitten is a maniac. She rolls Lumpy back into the room, biting his shaggy buffalo fur and thumping his soft tummy with her hard little hind feet. Oof! Ow! Lumpy kicks back. He bites her ear, but his grip is not tight, and she springs off him, leaps to the top of the dresser, and crouches there, surveying the room, tail twitching. Lumpy plays dead and stays as still as he possibly can. He wants to check the hall to see if the tiny gray mouse is okay, but he's scared to take a step. Pumpkin Face Head is sure to pounce on the next thing that moves in the room. Her yellow eyes shine in the dark. Mouse, Lumpy calls. Are you okay? Still here, comes the squeak. I think I have a plan, says Lumpy. Yay! When I lure it downstairs, you hide under the bookcase, okay? Okay. Without taking another moment to think or be frightened, Lumpy runs out the door of the bedroom, down the stairs, as fast as his short buffalo legs will carry him. Rumpa lumpa, rumpa lumpa, rumpa lumpa, rumpa lumpa. Pumpkin face head is hot behind. Lumpy can hear the thumpity thump of her feet on the stairs as he skids around the corner into the kitchen. The dishwasher looms white and ugly. Lumpy knows he has to act fast. He wedges a paw into the washer and the door bangs down. He grabs a butter knife in his mouth and gallops to the fridge. Pumpkin Face Head is there now, skittering across the slick linoleum on her paws, banging into a cabinet, leaping onto the table and crouching into pounce position again. Quickly, Lumpy wedges the knife into the seal of the looming fridge, then bangs it hard with his forepaws. Pop, the fridge is open. Lumpy was downstairs during dinner. He knows there's a casserole in there, a tuna casserole. Lumpy scrambles into the fridge and scrunches his bulk to the back, getting himself behind the large casserole dish covered in aluminum foil. Then he pushes hard with his buffalo feet against the cold plastic back of the fridge. Oof! The casserole clatters to the floor. The kitten leaps at the noise. She throws herself off the table and out of the kitchen, running a circuit around the living room several times. Then she trots back to investigate the tuna smell. Nervously, Lumpy pushes the casserole toward the cat, pulling off the foil so she can get a better whiff. Hmm. Pumpkin Face Head dances slightly to one side, comes forward, backs up, 
Then she sticks her orange nose deep into the dish and begins rooting around for chunks of tuna. While she's busy, Lumpy runs silently back up the stairs. What to do next? What to do? The hall is empty. The small gray mouse must have made it to safety. But the kitty will come back. Lumpy knows she will. What to do? Oh, what? Oh, what? Aha, maybe Tuck Tuck will know. She's a wise old towel and gives good advice. As Lumpy charges into the room, bathroom, words spill out urgently. This kind of person, kind of kitty, I don't know exactly. It's a thing, a pumpkin face head, very fast, very orange. It eats things, attacks. It got the mouse, tuna fish, coming back, help, he cries, leaping onto the toilet seat so Tuck Tuck can see him better. There's a kitten visiting, says Tuck Tuck calmly from her place on the rack. What should I do? It'll eat the mice for sure, Lumpy cries. Be brave. How? Tuck Tuck gestures slightly to with one corner with the spray bottle. What? The purple plastic spray bottle. Really? Trust me, says Tuck Tuck. You are brave and you can do it. She sounds so certain that Lumpy takes a deep breath and trusts her. He gets the purple plastic spray bottle from the edge of the tub and lugs it in his forepaws to the bedroom doorway. You're a toughy little buffalo, calls Tuck Tuck. Lumpy wonders if she's right. He peers into the girl's room. Mice, are you safe? Safe? Horse? A snicker comes from the rocking horse. Sheep? No answer. Sheep? Sheep! She's safe, comes a mouse voice. She's just not awake. What about me? Lumpy turns to see Stingray peering over the foot of the high bed. Aren't you worried about me? I thought you were asleep. No one can sleep with this racket, says Stingray. What are you doing? I was brave with a tuna casserole, Lumpy says it more to himself than to Stingray, and as he says it, he puffs with pride. He had not realized he had this bravery inside of him. But here it is. He's a toughy little buffalo, like Tuck Tuck said. Now I'm going to be brave with a spray bottle, he tells Stingray. Suddenly, no more time to talk. Pumpkin Face Head is charging. Thumpity thumpity tiny thumps of a little cat feet, charging up the stairs, careening off the banister, skittering down the hall, and schwerp! Lumpy squirts the spray bottle, squeezing hard, hard with his front paws. Pumpkin Face Head gets it straight in the face. She leaps into the air with a look of shock in her eyes. Schwerp! Lumpy squirts again. Pumpkin Face Head's damp orange fur now clings to her body. She looks at Lumpy in fear and backs up, spine arched. Schwerp! Lumpy ignores the choked feeling in his throat. She's only a baby kitty after all, and squirts her again. Schwerp! Schwerp! Pumpkin Face Head is soaked now, looking skinny and alone in a puddle in the hallway. <coughs> she hisses. Lumpy waves the spray bottle at her. <coughs> she hisses again. She slinks halfway down the stairs and curls herself up against the baseboard. Meow! She cries once, as if wishing for aid, then falls silent and still. Lumpy stands at the girl's door, victorious with the spray bottle for the rest of the night. He replaces it on the edge of the bathtub only minutes before the parents' alarm clock rings in the morning. That day, when the people are gone to work and school, Lumpy stands there again in the bedroom door, wielding the purple plastic spray bottle. Every day, all day, and every night, all night, Lumpy is there, and he will be until the week is up and Pumpkin Face Head is taken home in the cat carrier. Lumpy holds that spray bottle, keeping guard, even though the people scold Pumpkin Face Head for breaking into the fridge and tap her nose for punishment. He does it even though the kitten cowers in the hallway, looking sweet and meek. Even though she purrs at him and shows him her soft white tummy, he stands there, waving the bottle and threatening to squirt. Aren't you tired? asked Stingray one afternoon from the safety of the girl's bed. Yes, Lumpy is tired. Aren't you bored? asked the plump white mouse before running off to play leapfrog. Yes, Lumpy is bored. What are you doing again? asked Sheep, who has forgotten the kitten exists. Being brave with a spray bottle, Lumpy answers. You're my hero, says the tiny gray mouse, and Lumpy's chest swells. He will stand there, even though he's tired and bored and sorry for the lonely little kitty. Lumpy, the toughy little buffalo, defender and protector of the creatures in the bedroom. All right, that's the end of chapter five. Join me back next time for chapter six.